You know, I hear a lot of people don't like dual screen gaming, but to that I say, two, two heads, heads are, are better, better than, than you. one. What? No, they, it's two oh, heads oh are better than gosh. one. Oh my gosh. I, Wait, why I, would I say, I'm oh so my stupid. gosh. I'm so stupid. <laughs> I love my Nintendo Switch. It's got some great games and it's super convenient to just pick up and play at home or on the go. Would I say I've been having more fun with it than I have with my old Wii U or slightly more recently attained and subsequently hacked 3DS? Mmm, yeah, probably. But I still go back to those consoles every now and again to get experiences that Nintendo just can't provide on the Switch. How can this be, you might ask? Oh, but a few of Nintendo's Wii U games have made the jump to the Switch and a few 3DS games have done the same. What experiences did they offer that the Switch not only doesn't, but can't? The answer? Dual screen implementation. <laughs> I'm serious. I know, I know, the Wii U, right? It failed abysmally and cast dual screen gaming in a pretty negative light. I have to address this quickly before we go into the bulk of this video, but I'm not going to go into meticulous detail, because tons of people before me have comprehensively broken down the many elements and factors regarding the Wii U's failure. So I'll just say this. Many people associate the Wii U's focus on dual-screen home console gaming as being a major contributor to its poor sales and reception, but personally, I'm inclined to think a major contributor to its poor sales and reception was not focusing enough on it. I'm still serious. I'm not trying to revise history here. I know the gamepad was barely used in most of Nintendo's own games for the thing. I know most third parties either ignored the gamepad or just ignored the whole dang system for lack of want to utilize or program around it. I know games like Star Fox Zero get a bad rap for how poorly they handle their gamepad integration, and I even agree with that sentiment in Star Fox's case. But with all that said, Nintendo Land and Game & Wario would be nowhere near as much fun without their dual screen implementation allowing for their unique brands of asynchronous local multiplayer. Games like Mario Maker, Pushmo World, and even Super Smash Bros. Stage Builder are made all the better for their gamepad integration due to the single screen workarounds just not being as convenient or accessible, as made evident by Mario Maker 2's diminishing returns and the fact Game Builder Garage felt the need to include keyboard and mouse. Browsing the internet and streaming apps with the gamepad is miles better than any other controller I've ever used. I long for the gamepad every time I pick up a Roku TV remote. Gorman, I'm telling you, they don't have it. Just keep typing, Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. Pretty sure I saw it here last week. Even little quality of life options like easy map access, item rotation, and assigning markers in games like Pikmin 3, Splatoon, Wind Waker, and Hyrule Warriors made the gamepad feel like a worthwhile addition in my book. I mean, sure, those kinds of options are only a pause screen, mini menu, or hotkey sequence away for a single screen version of these types of experiences, but I appreciate them nonetheless, and I even prefer them over single screen substitutions in some instances, especially the Great Sea Map in Wind Waker and Go Here function in Pikmin 3. And these are just examples of ways the Wii U made effective use of dual screens. Just think of all the way the 3DS has done it. What? Oh, you're expecting me to list some? I told you just to think about it. You really want me to go out of my way? Ugh, no imagination, I swear. Lots of 3DS games have clean HUDs and UIs on the bottom screen that leave more room for action on the top. Some games would even assign some functions to the touchscreen and leave the more basic functions to the buttons. The system's cameras and microphones also allowed some games to have more possibilities than the Switch can muster. Unless it gets some accessories down the line. You are going to fail. And the sleek clamshell design of the non-2D models that keep your screens more secure and less prone to dust and scratches when you're traveling with it or just putting it away are, in my opinion, much nicer than the Switch's pack-me-up-or-risk-it-all solution. If I want to take my Switch out with me today, I'll have to wear cargo shorts. The point I'm trying to make here is that there's a lot of practical benefits to having two screens for your gaming system. So far, I've been appealing to the positive aspects observed in Nintendo's endeavors, but there are other examples in the industry that reaffirm my sentiments as well. Take, for example, Jackbox games. Players use their phones and a website access through their browsers to play social party games together. Some are more fun than others, but on the whole, I think they're brilliant. Jackbox demonstrates how the asynchronous multiplayer experiences the Wii U offered can offer even more versatility with more personal screens added to the mix. Multiple players all using their own private screens in tandem with a second communal screen has a lot to offer in the realm of gaming. But even going back to single player experiences, how familiar does this sound to you? You're playing a single screen game, but now find yourself at a loading screen or in a lobby. Are you just going to wait there idly, staring at the game's one screen the whole time? Or are you going to check another tab on your PC, or check your phone? I know I do. We're screen obsessed. It's true. It's not ideal, but it's true. So why exactly do we assume splitting attention between two screens needs to be as unenjoyable as most found Star Fox Zero? I mean, heck, Gamer and Game and & Wario made it seem like a viable mechanic long before Star Fox Zero came onto the scene. I'm just saying, man. I see more positive potential in dual screen gaming returning than I do negative. 
Especially if Nintendo does it. Because on top of all the stuff I've mentioned already, the DS, 3DS, and Wii U libraries could feasibly make their way back into Nintendo's current pool of available retro games. And Lord knows Nintendo needs more of that going forward. Now that I've hopefully communicated a sufficient amount of compelling reasons as to why I'd advocate for Nintendo's next system to have two screens, here are just a few ideas I have regarding how that hypothetical system could make use of them. There's of course the more general points I've already brought up, like quality of life benefits made possible by putting uncluttered gameplay up top, while the bottom gets more interfaces and additional touchscreen stuff and easier browser, app, and menu navigation. But consider this. The Wii U and 3DS had nigh prehistoric touchscreens, displays, microphones, and cameras, even for the time they were new. Imagine a Switch successor with two screens that both output at least 1080p 60fps and have touchscreens, cameras, speakers, and mics that are comparable to the last five or so years of smartphones at least, and, and this is where things go off the wall a little, can attach to and detach from one another like Joy-Cons do to the current Switch, so that handheld play is similar to the DS and at-home play is similar to the Wii U. When I say I'm serious, I mean I'm SERIOUS! Remember all the Switch commercials where a person detaches their Joy-Cons and hands one to a friend to play tabletop mode? I can easily imagine the same thing for this successor, but with the other screen being handed off to a friend. The way I see it, the bottom screen would be like the Switch in so much as it is the system itself, and the top screen would be like the Wii U gamepad in the sense that it's an accessory slash controller for the system. But, unlike the Wii U gamepad, any top screen could be synced with any system to the point where they can still interact when not attached and multiple top screens could connect to a single system, thus upping the ante to meet and even surpass the potential seen in Jackbox games, and further blurring the line between old-fashioned couch multiplayer and LAN multiplayer. It would ideally even be the case that more top screens could be sold separately in stores, as they'd ostensibly be extra controllers, you dig? And here's something else to consider. Nintendo dipped their toe into VR with a Switch and Labo, and it well, it stunk. But a new dual screen system could try again now with the ability to offer other players the ability to play asynchronously with the VR player, or even just observe alternate views of them in-game. Now all of this might sound like a little much, but like the gamepad and Wii U as a whole before it, a good amount of games wouldn't necessarily require two screens or any gimmicks or inputs beyond old-fashioned buttons and sticks, really. The Wii U likely made sure this was the case in order to advertise off TV play so I imagine this hypothetical new console would do the same in order to make that whole hand-a-friend-a-screen thing I mentioned earlier viable on top of just offering players more options in general. The pro controller market and GameCube adapter supremacists shall be appeased. Hell, maybe even handheld play wouldn't need both screens. Leave the top screen at home. Lay it over the system screen like those folding Samsung phones, why not? If there's a significant drawback or deterrent to going this direction, aside from inviting Wii U comparisons, it'd probably be cost-related. But hey, Nintendo's been doing plenty of overcharging this generation for faulty Joy-Cons, barely improved ports, and poor online services. So I can't imagine they'd be too concerned whether or not their fans would drop more money than they're used to on what are, again, ostensibly extra controllers. Now before I wrap this video up, I can't not throw some ideas out for specific games that could utilize these features. First things first, it's Nintendo's big names that need to sell people on this, but that shouldn't be too hard. A mainline Mario wouldn't necessarily need to utilize both screens, though finally giving us a fully co-op 3D Mario campaign would be incredible. But the spin-off material is endless. An easily shareable Mario Kart experience with a handful of oddball features like DS-style emblem making, arcade-style face insertion, and maybe even using the microphones to record your own horn sounds would be a system seller for sure. Mario Party is another obvious place to experiment with the new features should they feel so inclined. Mario Maker 3, or even Mario Maker 3D, would be made way more exciting with a second screen there to ease the process of level creation. And how about Zelda? Well, Wind Waker HD has already shown us how well the 3D Zelda formula lends itself to having a second screen for map use and item management. And hey, a shareable second screen? Great excuse to bring back the Four Swords style or even apply it to a 3D game, why not? Most mainline Pokemon games have been two screen experiences. And now with the possibility of separating the screens to have local battles against other players, it's an easy sell. Same thing for Animal Crossing. Existing fans are more than happy with the two screen setup if New Leaf is anything to go by. Splatoon could finally get Squid Jump back just as it was always meant to be. Pikmin could get those quality of life features from 3 on Wii U back now with the option for multiple players to enjoy them at once. Ooh, and these new features would be a game changer for WarioWare. Every gimmick the series has ever implemented in micro games are not only viable, but can be played by two or more players at once. And with all these features on the table, games and series that have been somewhat reliant on them in the past could be more likely to make glorious comebacks. 
Series like Nintendo Land, Kid Icarus, Frankie Forms, Art Academy, Photo Dojo, Josuju Mecha MG, Codename Steam, Trace Memory, and maybe even more. Sure, these series could return on a single screen system, like the Switch, mayhaps. Please? But as I've been saying throughout this video, Two screens provide additional or alternate options that can do wonders for any given game's quality of life or accessibility. But wait, I'm still not done throwing out ideas. How about a co-op game where one player is a basic earthbound character, while a second is a somewhat omnipotent godlike one and they need to work together using each of their unique abilities to navigate levels? Imagine the possibilities for competitive multiplayer games more akin to cardboard or tabletop games where the secrecy introduced by players each having their own personal screens adds to the fun. How about something close in nature to a point and click, but with more traditional adventure gameplay incorporated like what Pikmin did for real-time strategy? Do you have any idea how hard I was hoping the Wii U would get a sequel to Spore Hero when I was a teenager? I thought the creature creation would be made miles better with the gamepad. A new dual screen system could absolutely resurrect that style of game. Speaking of resurrecting gimmicky and somewhat niche styles of games I played as a teenager, the fall of Toys to Life has likely put Skylanders to bed, so why not make a new game or remastered deal that doesn't require toys, like Starlink, but still preserves the spirit of the portal idea by dedicating the second screen to character rotation? Oh, and how crazy would a game that overlaps control methods and gameplay genres be? Like uh, one team composed of beat-em-up players and rail shooter players, fighting a team composed of players deploying troops and establishing bases RTS style, and vertical shmup players. Throw some party game style R&D in there. Ooh, it would be a mess, but I'd love it. It's not as if stuff like this wouldn't work with split screen LAN or online play, but at the end of the day, I just think the multi-screen implementation would be neat for the amount of potential it holds regarding both novelty factor and straight up innovation and accessibility. Well, I've said my piece. Now go ahead, take to the comments. Let me have at it. Tell me how stupid, superfluous, impractical, backwards, regressive, entitled, and other disparaging adjectives I am for wanting Nintendo's next system to focus on multiple screens. Or if by some miracle you actually agree with me in wanting a new dual screen system, what are some ideas you have for games and or mechanics that could come from it? Whatever you have to say, please say it down in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it, share it if you feel so inclined, and subscribe to my channel for more content like it. Also, if you'd like to go the extra mile in supporting us financially, consider, consider donating, donating to, us to us through Patreon. Through Super thanks. No, come on, the Patreon page has got more know, stuff it's on, on it's YouTube. Got more it's probably easier for it's, them. Come on, like, we can't rely on you for everything. Oh no! Two heads may be better than one. But, but comedy, comedy comes, comes in threes! Oh. Thank you all for watching, and special thanks as always to my Patreon backers, whom you can join for as little as $1 a month. You'll get behind the scenes updates, early access to videos, and of course a credit here at the end of my videos if you do. If you'd like to make a one-time donation, you can do so here on YouTube using the super thanks option below. While we're here, I'd also like to give a shout out to the new subscribers. There have been more of you in the last like two weeks than there have been for most of last year. It's been incredibly humbling to see you all come in such a short amount of time. Anywho, subscribe and stay tuned for more videos on gaming and other niche things that I like probably someday in the future. You know, it's funny, last year there was so little from Nintendo that I wanted to talk about that I actually thought, oh, you know what, 2023 is going to be the year that I finally get into movies and comics and musicals and everything, but maybe I'll get around to those things sometime in the later future. See you next time I see ya.